And now, live from Laurel, Maryland, where rednecks are not an endangered species, it's snack time. <laughs> I'm eating these chocolate-covered espresso beans I got the other day. <laughs> They're really good. They're full of caffeine. They're very strong. A lot of chocolate, a lot of caffeine. Onto the snack. <laughs> no more wasting time. Onto the snack. Today's snack is taking you back. Another story of your... Hold on, let me swallow this. Mmm, 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 there's people. <laughs> this is so good, but it's going to put me in a sugar coma. Today's snack takes us back to Spring Rock High School, circa 1989-90, when I was in Mrs. Hamden's psychology class. But snack boy, anyway, in Mrs. Hamden's psychology class, there's something you need to know about Miss Hamden. The nicest of ladies you ever want to meet, you can always get an A from her, no matter what you do. But here's the thing. The woman wears the cheapest wig this side of Kmart. But Snack Boy, it is so not nice and so politically incorrect a comment on someone's wig. Oh, people, it was such a bad wig. You could see the net, the mesh net and the price tag right through the back of the wig. And I'll tell you one thing about Springbrook High School, people. If in the movie The Faculty, the teachers were all aliens, well, at Springbrook, anybody who was anybody wore a wig. She was one of like four or five on the world's most wanted wig teacher list. Anyway, one day she comes into class and Mrs. Hamden says, Class, good news. I'm going to bring in a film strip tomorrow. We're all going to watch Rain Man. And we're like, Mrs. Hamden, what does Rain Man have to do with our class? It's about autism. I know we're not studying autism right now, but it's fascinating. It's fascinating, completely fascinating. And Rain Man is a beautiful movie. I love Dustin Hoffman. He, I just want to take him home. He's adorable. So tomorrow, we're going to watch Rain Man, but do me a favor, people. I've never shown Rain Man in class before, so go home and tell your parents that you're watching a rated PG-13 movie. And I was like, Mrs. Camden, Mrs. Hamden, Rain Man is rated R. Everyone's like, Terry, shut up! Damn! Shut up, shut up! And I was like, fine. She's like, so see you all tomorrow. And the bell rang. The next day we came in, and she started showing us none other than Rain Man. And we're all kind of watching the movie and thinking, well, whatever. It's easier than listening to the teacher today. And all of a sudden, it gets to that scene where there's a sex scene, people. It's not a dirty sex scene. It, it, it happens under the sheets. But you can tell what's going on. And she was like half asleep at her desk, and she's like, oh, oh. What? What? Oh, goodness. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. So she stands up and she walks around her desk and she sees on the screen what's going on. And she's like, oh, 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 oh turn, turn on the lights. Hit the lights. So this girl, Heather, jumps up and she turns on the lights and she's like, all right. Okay, everybody. We're not watching Rain Man no more. We're not watching Rain Man no more. Okay. Okay. And so she goes to the projector and she leans forward to find the off switch to turn the projector off. When guess what gets caught? In the spoke of the bigger projector wheel. That's right! Mrs. Hamden's wig! That's right! The top of her wig, the uppermost tier, it looks like a wedding cake, the uppermost tier of her wig crammed right in through the double bindings of it, the projector. And just as she realized it, it started to snatch the wig off her head with the rotation of the film projector. Oh, snack boy, what is this crap you're handing us? No, people, it's true! It really happened. And so I was sitting right there looking up at her, and and she literally was taking her whole body and circling with the rotation of the film projector, trying with gravity and weight and the laws of physics to keep the wig on her head. And I could see it as if in slow motion, like a Brian De Palma movie, the wig started to come off her head. It started to shift. And you could see the hairs on her neck that don't match the hairs on the wig. And I stood up and I was like, Mrs. Canner! Careful! And she went, oh, Terry, honey, please, please. As she's turning, she's like, oh, oh, Chloe, please turn it off. Turn it off. Turn off the off switch quick. Come on. And, and I, I, one hand grabbed the back of her wig. And I said, sorry, Mrs. Canner. And I tried to keep it on her neck, but that only made the wig slip off the front, off the front bangs of her head. And I started looking for the off switch of the projector. I'm trying, Mrs. Canner. I'm trying to find it. I'll turn it off. Unplug it. Oh, God, unplug it. Please, please. And just then, I found the off switch. And it spun to a stop. And the wig remained on her head. 
and she stood up erect, trying to regain her dignity, any of the dignity that was lost. The wig never completely came off her head. People remember that. She fixed it. She tucked in the netting, the little bits of strands from her neck, and she went, I don't want anybody to tell the parents what they saw here today. I could get in a lot of trouble with the board if they knew that there was a door fornication in this movie. Cut.